Welcome to In The Workshop, making some minor improvements to the Stuart Models HB6 boiler. And here it is on my kitchen table as part of the Twin Victoria steam plant. And here is the boiler on the workbench in the workshop, conveniently sat very close to a Stuart triple expansion engine that I'm rebuilding. Using a Stuart Models HB6 boiler with a Stuart Models triple expansion engine would be, as they say, a marriage made in heaven. Just looking at this image of these two really nice, good quality items sat on my workbench starts my grey matter stirring. This really would make a top class steam plant for a model boat. A large model boat. A model boat that would be too long to fit in my car. And very much like the steam plant that I've just removed the HB6 boiler from, the whole thing would be far too large to keep in the house or the workshop. I started to think about ways to get over this problem, make the boat in two halves so that it splits for transport and storage. But no, I really do think that that would be a step too far, and I may start a project that I can't finish. I'll think on this further while I make slight modifications to the HB6 boiler. I've removed the pressure gauge and you can see the original siphon and the banjo union. This siphon is quite strong and it's very much like the ones that are fitted to 504 boilers. And without modifying it, it's too long to allow me to pull the pressure gauge up into a vertical position. I have a solution. I will remove this siphon and put this into the picture. This small and neat siphon comes from a company called 21st Century Steam, owned and run by my friend Chris Lockwood. They even come with a brass boiler bush, which of course I'm not going to use. This is the centre part of the banjo type union that screws into the boiler, but there is a problem, it's threaded quarter by 40 threads per inch, whereas all the quarter inch fittings on this boiler appear to be 32 threads per inch. I tried this original part of the banjo union in the smaller siphon, but it didn't fit. I could make a new part, it's a very simple one. I thought I would take this opportunity though, because this is a tutorial to show you something you must never do. I re-threaded the quarter by 40 union, quarter by 32, using a die. And here you see the result, it's a very strange looking thread. All the armchair experts out there, just leave it out, don't comment, I'm showing what you shouldn't do. But I've just done it, and it works. Even though I don't like them, I've used the two aluminium washers that came with this siphon, and in conjunction with some Loctite 542 thread sealant, it works. Here I'm refitting the pressure gauge to the siphon. Note that I'm holding a spanner on the square part of the pressure gauge. This is to support it while I tighten the nut. If you don't support the pressure gauge when you're fitting it, you could actually damage it. And now, in my opinion, this pressure gauge looks much better mounted in the vertical plane. Most pressure gauges mounted on boilers are mounted in this way, vertical, not horizontal. I'm not going to refit the whistle assembly because I don't want it in this position. And for that reason, I'm fitting a quarter by 32 threads per inch blanking plug, complete with a copper washer. It's now time to change the safety valve back to a Stuart type. This is against my better judgment because I don't like Stuart safety valves, they make a noise. I originally changed the Stuart safety valve for a Jubilee fitting safety valve, but it looked a bit small, and that's the only reason I'm going back to the Stuart one. I've refitted this steam tap at the top, this allows compressed air to be fed into the boiler, and in this position it also helps to prevent knocking the pressure gauge and bending the siphon. This was not the original water gauge that was fitted to the HB6, I changed it for this one because it has inspection plugs which you can remove to insert a piece of wire or similar to clear a blockage. But I really couldn't get used to the appearance of it because of the bar stock hexagon ends. And here, as you can clearly see, I've removed it. I'm going to fit a much better and much more expensive water gauge. I think a boiler of this quality deserves it. These, in my opinion, are the best water gauges on the market. They are not cheap. They are reassuringly expensive. The drain cocks don't dribble, and the body is made from phosphor bronze. They're altogether the best ones I've ever used. Oh no, why am I doing this? This is complete sacrilege. I'm re-threading the end of it to fit a quarter by 32 thread. 
Well, the reason for it is you must never re-thread the boiler and I need this to fit. I don't even know if you can buy these with the quarter by 32 thread. The threaded quarter by 40. I haven't lost my marbles. I know what I'm doing. Please keep watching to see something wonderful. I tighten up the water gauge like this using a spanner and it's very conveniently made out of square phosphor bronze. I fitted it using some Loctite 542 and about an hour later I remove it. Just watch this. The threads on these very classy water gauges are not part of the water gauge. And now the Loctite 542 is firmly holding the thread in the hole and the fitting screws off the thread. What I should do now is get my pair of pliers on the end of this thread insert and remove it and make an adapter thread. This may be very unengineering like but it will work perfectly well. If you decide to do a job like this yourself you have the choice. I didn't really need to take this off to start with, I only took it off to show the fact that it was a thread insert. And now complete with a shim washer of the desired thickness, I've put it back in place. I fitted the top part of the water gauge next. And as you can see by the gap between the water gauge fitting and the boiler bush, I need to put a shim washer here too. These water gauges are really upmarket. Look at this, the inspection plug is fitted with an o-ring, as is the top cap. Where did I buy this water gauge from? Well, I bought a pair off eBay, but I normally buy them from Blackgates Engineering. I use one of them on my Lion locomotive, and this is the other one. When you fit water gauges, it's really important to make sure that the glass is in the center. I've shown how I do it in many previous videos. You can use a piece of steel bar the same size as the glass to centralize it, but I don't bother. I loosely fit the glass through the top nut. And then before putting the glass into the bottom nut, I move it around. And once it moves an equal amount, left to right and front to back, then I know it's exactly in the centre of the bottom fitting. The added advantage of this design is because the ends of the water gauge are square, you can hold a steel rule against both of the fittings to confirm the alignment. A while back, a really irate viewer told me off for not using a piece of steel bar, but I've never done that in 50 years. He even typed his comment using capital letters and exclamation marks, a real warrior. The final part of fitting this water gauge is to use some Loctite 542, and then screw the drain cock in place underneath the bottom fitting. I was lucky here, it ended up being just where I wanted it. I needed the lever to be in the centre and face backwards. Now it's time to test the boiler to see whether I have any leaks. I've pushed a piece of silicone rubber tubing onto a piece of copper pipe. This in turn is screwed into the tap at the top of the boiler using a spanner and I've opened the valve to let some air in. I'm removing this safety valve because I selected the wrong one. This is an old one. I don't know where my head was when I was doing this. The more modern type of Stuart safety valve that actually came with the boiler is the one that I need to fit. It's time now to open the compressed air valve on the compressor and let some air in. First of all, I'm only using £25 per square inch. And so far so good, there are no leaks. After this, I wound the pressure up to working pressure. Then the pipe blew off. Note to self, it is a good idea to remember to fit the cable tie around the piece of silicone rubber tubing so that it stays on the pipe when I turn the pressure up. In this clip I've connected the steam outlet because I'm going to connect this to the water pump. As I mentioned previously this is a Southworth Engines large duplex water pump. I say large because they also do a smaller one. I'm going to make some videos about the trials and tribulations of getting this pump to work properly. I've already made some sorting out the water end of it. Now it's time to play with the steam end of it. But that will be in another video, or maybe two, and hopefully not three. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.